Hello and welcome to another wet day in the north. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tom. This is my EV swapped, body swapped BMW Z3 that I'm getting ready for an MOT again. Uh, so built this in lockdown with my daughter originally and um, kept the rather rusty, scratched, dented, <laughs> very cheap BMW Z3 body uh, and swapped out the motor for the drivetrain from, or part of the electric drivetrain from an Outlander FEV uh, with some BMW batteries and a Prius inverter. Then took it off the road again about a year ago, um, initially for a motor upgrade, uh, which went very well until it didn't. So took it off the road again uh, to swap out the motor again for one that I haven't screwed up. Uh, and to do this body swap, this is the Z300S kit from Tribute Automotive, which makes this car, when it's finished, look like a sort of 50s roadster. Challenge for today, um, I've already done a nut and bolt check, gone around and checked that I haven't missed anything crucial in terms of uh, things like the bolts holding the battery pack in, which I'd left out, um, albeit it is mechanically secured, it can't go anywhere, but good to have some bolts in there as well. Uh, and um, just a general sort of check over the engine bay, make sure I've not forgotten anything. Then um, secure the charging cable, which I've test fitted at the moment because um, the charge port is now at the back and the charger is at the front, so we're going to run a cable under the body. It's got to secure that with some 3D printed parts and install the BMS. Um, probably not going to get it tested yet, I've got to install the right software on it, but I'll get that installed again with some 3D printed bits. Uh, and then we're kind of close to being there, may take the car off the jack stand. Lots of work going on on the street. Uh, and flip it around, see, get it ready for charging. That's it. So this is my engine bay, um, much tidier than it used to be, albeit for purely cosmetic purposes. At some point I'm going to strip it all back, clean, paint and reinstall everything. Um, but not right now, that's not a job for right now. This is my BMS, this is a case from AliExpress, I think it's about eight pounds. Um, and inside is the Spaceballs BMS. Uh, from Jamie Jones uh, and uh, Robert uh, Stevens, which is um, started from the um, Simp BMS um, and has been ported to run on an ESP32 uh, and in a nice compact package in this. So let's say about eight quid case with the connector uh, from AliExpress. It's already done the wiring, wiring's installed. And what I've done is to, so that I can take this in and out I have um, 3D printed this part, which I can just stick in with double sided tape on top of the high voltage junction box, insert a couple of um, M6 bolts to flush. So that can just sit down there now, sit here. I've cleaned the top of this so that the double-sided tape should fit. So we'll stick this back on here. Stick nuts on. I'll probably have some lock nuts at some point. Stick the cable on to make sure we get this in the right place. Now these are the um, BMS tails, which will go onto a, uh, a BMS, a, uh, not BMS tails. These are the uh, canvas tails which will go on to a BMS loop at some point. Uh, see if I can get this in the right way around. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. There we go, that's quite nice. So that needs to sit about there with the cabling. We sit it kind of in the middle actually, it looks quite nice. There I guess. So I'll cut some strips and get that installed. There we go, that's going nowhere. Nice and secure. Tight those nuts up at some point. 
but that will do. So BMS in, like I said, it's still got to install the right software package on it, but it's nice to be able to pull it in and out. Um, we'll see if it fires up and see if we get a, a Wi-Fi signal from it at some point. Maybe not in this episode. Pretty cool. That's largely things under the uh, bonnet done. There's lots of things I still want to do. I want to redo the... I don't know if you can see these down here. See if you can. Not quite. But the, um, the grommets for the charger don't seal very well. So I'd like to redo some grommets for the Outlander charger connecting to the battery box. Uh, and out to the charging port um, so some design and 3d printing to be done there still got to run actually yeah got to run the uh, the loop the uh, can bus loop and tie it into all of these tails so bms uh, shunt um, the charger's already running uh, into there because that's on a separate one or have i just yeah, the charger is the end of the loop. So actually, these need to tie in to here. Or here. So yeah. Not bad. So, quick bit of a look under the car. This is the uh, charge port I installed a few episodes ago. Yes, I'm going to replace this piece of aluminium and uh, put something a bit stiffer in. But, and this is just temporary routing for the cable using the exhaust hangers to get the layout right. It's going to run like this, up here, round here, and then down all the way along there. And what's just fallen off here is this 3D printed piece, which I'm going to use some um, adhesive to bond in. I've got two different sizes of these at the moment. I've got these short ones for some spaces. I've got long ones where I can fit like there. And they take um cable ties so i'm going to bond these on in the right place my plan is to use hot glue and um polyurethane adhesive so dab of hot glue on either end polyurethane in the middle and hopefully the hot glue will hold it while the pu adhesive sets and we'll see if that works so the hot glue and polyurethane method seems to work pretty well actually the hot glue is holding these in nicely or if it can focus while they set. I managed to get all the way up here, halfway down the body. But I need to check the other end of the car because I'm running out of space. I also need to get some uh, degreaser uh, on the underside there just to clean it up a little bit so I can get the last view on at the other end. They might stick, they might not. So I'll just clean it up a little bit with a bit of uh, alcohol or something to uh, make those stick. But yeah, like I say, need to jack it up a bit first and it's getting towards dinner time. Move the car around to get easier access to the front. Found some flat tires when I did so. What you can see at the back Oh, and I'm not entirely happy with how close that is to the wheel, so that's going to need pinning in a bit. But the rest of it, I think, looks pretty good. My hot glue and polyurethane approach worked. The hot glue pinning it while the polyurethane sets. And then just cable tied up. It's pretty secure. So I just need to do the front bit now. In order to do that, oh, you get old man noises now. Oh, I've just been in here with some IPA and a carbon fibre towel. If you know, you know. Um, cleaning up this piece here, getting some of BMW's inherent oil-based rust protection system uh, off the uh, underside so that things will stick. That should be dry now. Should be plenty of space to get a few more clamps in. We can get that on. And then that job's finished for now. I hope. Next job is fitting this uh, inner boot piece. This goes uh, 
up here. Up that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then the, obviously, boot latches here. I've done a little bit on this before. The uh, boot seal runs around here, and I really do want to get this boot sealed because it is, as you can tell, from below the battery getting wet in here. So we're good to get the boot seal on uh, and get this boot latching down. A couple of problems. First of all, I spent ages measuring out holes so that I can put some raw plugs or something in here. There's an awful lot of space. I actually 3D printed some little short ones. You can see how short they are. But PETG is too stiff to act as a raw plug. So I could do it with PLA, I suppose. It'd be a bit softer, but I might actually just stick some normal raw plugs in and cut them off. Um, and on some screws through from here. But I drilled these holes. I spent ages measuring it and then drilled the holes slightly too far up here. So when the screws are in, this actually sits down a little bit. Um, I did try just bonding this on, um, but it peeled away. There's just too much weight there. Um, and it flapped around too much and sort of peeled it away. Also doesn't like bonding to that metal very much, I don't think. So I'm gonna do a bit of both. I'm gonna bond it and screw it. And the combination should hold it with this holding the weight and holding it in. Probably need to trim, you can see I've made some marks there. A bit of this inner boot around. So it fits around these pieces here. A bit more neatly. But yeah, I need some raw plugs that I haven't got the right size. Made a bit more progress at the front and at the back. The front. Oh, if we get down here, you can see that the rest of the cabling's in all nice and tidy. Got glue set. That's not going anywhere. More old man noises. Still not wholly happy with the roosting around here. But I have cable tied it in, so it can't go anywhere. Slightly worried it's going to rub on this arm. We'll have to see where this arm ends up when it's up. May have to make a bracket to lift this up here and keep it in nice and tight and maybe put a bit of extra plastic shielding around it. And in the back, our boot lid seal is in. Drilled the hole for the um, high level brake light and um, boot closed sensor wires to go in here through this grommet and our boot catches in and working. These are only temporary parts, these the 3D printed pieces. Um, I'll probably redo them out of carbon fibre and make them even more substantial and fare this whole thing in. So it does sort of interfere into the boot but it does mean no messy boot handle up here. We can just keep it nice and smooth and simple and not have Lots of wiring up here, lots of complicated wiring going through here and failing. So yeah, I'll come up with a, some, I'll probably take this knob off and flip it around. Maybe you can unbolt it, don't know. But I have some sort of solenoid in here to do the release. And then the manual one, I have some sort of manual mechanism, some sort of lever in here. Manual mechanism going with a, a thing down to the bottom, probably in a pull down there. But we can now. <laughs> there we go. We can now uh, shut the boot and at the moment with a little thread down here, a little piece of twine, pop it open again. So that's pretty cool. Again, I mean none of this stuff's final, but it's good enough to get it through an MOT. Obviously needs it hoover out in here. Let's refit those bump stops. That one looks like it's been hit with it. No. Oh. I thought it'd been hit with a solder or something then. But yeah, this always needs to clean out. I'm obviously going to board this out um, at some point. I think the hydraulic fluid in the uh, in the hood mechanism probably needs topping up as well. It uh, it doesn't start it itself. It needs uh, a little bit more of a push than it used to at the moment. But yeah, good progress. So I think that'll do for this evening. Forgive the kids screaming murder in the background. Um, yeah, one step closer to MOT basically. So booked in for next week. Um, 
probably this week by the time you see this. Um, and I'll obviously uh, capture as much of the process as I can. Maybe one more prep video before I go in. I want to give it a good clean, make it look presentable. Check all the tyres, double check all the brakes. I'm pretty sure it needs bleeding again. I'm hoping it's not an issue with the um, with the vacuum pump. Um, need to have a look and do a rough cut on headlight alignment. Um, that's definitely a job for this weekend. So yeah, get all of that done. Then fingers crossed, MOT next week. But certainly a drive of it next week. It's all insured again now uh, through Adrian Flux. Um, a lot cheaper than last time. Um, last time I insured it, it was about £1,600 a year. It's come down to under 900 this time. Fingers crossed it comes down again in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching. Glad to be back from my holes and making videos again. And uh, yeah, please do like and subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff and this car.